Hi everyone, this is Jen, aka Laurel Evies, and welcome to Psycolonials. I don't know what to expect. I'm kind of nervous, to be honest. For those who don't know, the writer for Homestuck and Problem Sleuth, Andrew Hussey himself, made this visual novel game Psycholonials. We don't know much about it except for like one wacky trailer that had like a scene that Andrew was like right at the end like yeah this scene doesn't end up in the final thing and we're like of course not but <laughs> and like the tag phrase that was like so rather simply put like oh yeah uh dealing with supernatural forces these two girls they're gonna start a social media empire or something along those lines and i'm like excuse me what <laughs> oh gosh but supposedly we got a soundtrack and well i just want to see like a return to form for <laughs> for hussy it's been a while since we've seen him actually do a project other than Homestuck, and I keep on hitting my table, I'm sorry. And I just want to see, I just want to see a return to form. I just want Hussey to be uh, like a good writer with something that isn't something he's been writing for 10 years. So <laughs> there's all these different languages, so I'm just going to click on one, and that would be English. 18 plus. Story is not suitable for minors. Oh. That's loud. How's the levels doing? What? The level, it's not capturing any of this audio? Why? Uh... Oh. There we go. I'm trying to find a good balance here. For you and for me. Okay. Okay. Everything's good. Had to fiddle with the, uh, like, audio, apparently, in, uh, OBS for a bit for this game. Apparently it didn't like being able to play sound for this for whatever reason. That should be fine now. <laughs> Let's take a look at the options. I'm curious here. Okay, so we got resume story, we got sound, main menu, chapters, credits, more options. Does it break apart like uh, Pony Island? Music and links, and then there's something that's locked? Okay, well I know that this is supposed to be like, there's supposed to be like five, not five chapters, nine chapters to this. It's $10 on Steam, all the updates are free and included with the single purchase. So you don't have to worry about that if you're like $10 per chapter. No, it's not that. It's not that at all. I don't think I want to screw with any of the options right now. So let's just get started. Ooh, that cut out. Chapter one of nine, Summer That Never Was. Okay, and we got like a back arrow and we got a save. Do, 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 do. This isn't... Lancer. It's like a weird version of Lancer. Okay, I'll take that. Lancer is one of the good ones. Okay. An island sits off the eastern, eastern coast of the United States. It's a little over 10 miles wide, and most of the year, a little over 10,000 people deep. <laughs> okay, then. Is it a popular hotspot destination, or are you saying there's mass flooding? I need the answers. <laughs> they call it a summer colony. Uh, when the weather gets warm and the number of people pushing down on the island swells to around 50,000. Aw, oh, look at the posterizations of this, like, New England town. <laughs> the town here shares its name with the island. You live here. You're one of the residents pushing down on this 
place year round. You're one of the residents pushing down on the place year round. Okay. The steady residents don't contribute contribute much weight though. Off season life is like a reprieve for the island, like lifting the load off the back of a pre perennial workhorse. I can read. Like lifting the load off the back of a perennial workhorse. What is your name? No, just kidding. The summer crush is a different story. A hundred thousand feet at once give you the impression the seasonal c oh, let's see, the seasonal colonists have all conspired to shove this charming New England rock right back into the ocean. But 2020 is different. You don't see it happening this year. Can't say you're heartbroken about it either. Ah, oh, that's right. We're set in 20. We're like set in April 2020. I've, I misread it as 2021 and I'm like, what? <laughs> but yeah, okay. But it makes sense. Uh, Hussy wrote this while in quarantine. Oh, look, I see a car cat and an, eye and an insane clown posse. Is that like one of the Homestuck calendars right there? Oh, wow. Your name is Zhen. It's pronounced more like Jen than Zen, but most people have been determined to mispronounce your name since elementary school, so at some point you decided to go by Z and it stuck. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that ZH and I'm like, oh, cool, it's a Zhen. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thank goodness my Chinese lessons took off. Woo. Stuck it to your parents too, sorta, who endowed you with the romanticization of a name which would neither guarantee a lifetime of correct... Okay, let me read that again. Stuck it to your parents too, sorta, who endowed you with the romanticization of a name which would either guarantee a life of correcting people or, inter or interminably acquiescing to their wrongness. <sighs> you like Z better anyway because it's yours, not theirs. Are we a Gen Z? Er? Anyway, it. <laughs> it's roughly 3 p.m. and you've just woken up earlier than yesterday, so that's a plus. And with a bit of a hangover, but that's far from unusual. Your bedroom is a bit messy, but you don't notice anymore. It's a cozy little depression nest and it serves its purpose well, which is to store the body of a depressed 23-year-old woman when she's not working. <laughs> I guess not, then. Uh, gosh, I can't remember when the millenni millennial and Gen Z split begins. Whilst the decor manages to accurately reflect her personality and emotional landscape. But just that one section of the wall there. <laughs> oh, she's up. Ordinarily, you'd reach for your smartphone before even getting out of bed and whittle away the first hour of the day scrolling through the lifetimes of your various accounts. Just checking to make sure... Okay, volume's still good. I mean, I can always edit this in post, especially since I separated my voice from the actual audio of this. Okay. But for whatever reason, today feels a little different. You stand up to stretch your legs and have a look around for a... To, okay. You stand up to stretch your legs and have a look around to reacquaint yourself with the artifacts of your life, which have achieved invisibility through famili familiarity. Read. Dang it, read. You had this exact arrangement of posters taped to your wall since you moved here. Before that, actually, these posters were on the wall of your dorm in college in this exact pattern. When the time came to make your desperate getaway from campus, you ripped it all, ripped it off your wall in one big taped together mess, rolled it all up, and hit the road. <laughs> I can only make out Car Cat and the Insane Clown Posse. Then, when you got here, you simply unrolled it and put it back up. Why why mess with it? This particular hodgepodge of pop cultural nonsense says as much about yourself as you'd ever care to say using a wall. Maybe it's a consequence of the media you consume that made you feel this way, but you've always believed you can tell a lot about a person by studying the things they used to like. In fact, you might even go as far as to say in this era, an individual's personality isn't much more than a composite of all the media they've ever consumed, and their favorite stuff in particular. 
That's why whenever you meet someone new, you kind of wish you could just look at their bedroom and take a quick tour of all their interests, sparing you a lot of laborious banter and wondering over whether someone's worth your time. Again, it could be certain types of content you consumed in your past which resulted in this philosophy, but you can't be sure. All you can do is refresh your memory on the various interests to reaffirm who you are to yourself. Along with any imaginary voyeurs, uh, voyeurs, dang it, who have inexplicably decided to tune into your underwhelming morning ritual. That's your Metal Gear song. <laughs> of course, Metal Gear would be here. Are you sure Aisha didn't write this? Okay. That's your Metal Gear Solid poster. You've created a number of fan works for this series, and not a single one of them is suitable for children. Very few are suitable for most adults, actually. But never mind that. You think Kojima has an advanced understanding of war, which has eluded authors far more elaborate than he. All I can think of is the Hi I'm Daisy comics. I'm sorry. <laughs> <sighs> okay. You also think Kojima has an advanced understanding of horny gay men with enormous butts, which is an asset of far greater literary value, in your opinion. The insane clown posse, of course. You're way out of this by now, but you had a juggalo phase in high school. The reason for this decision was extraordinary, complex, and layered. Far more over the no far over the head of anyone who would ever be inclined to wonder. If you even need to ask why, being down with the clown cannot be fully explained. You mainly keep this up as a reminder of your roots. <laughs> down with the clown. Okay, sorry. A reminder of a philosophy towards family, which you prefer to more conventional definitions. Okay. You've had it up to th you've had this up since 2017, which is before Post went crazy with all the face tattoos. Increasingly, these days, he seems determined to look like hot garbage, and yet the uglier he gets, the more fond of him you grow. You will never forsake this kind-hearted goblin prince. He could tattoo his d yeah on his face, and you probably weep tears of joy. <laughs> It's like you said when you checked out the ICP poster. You like to keep reminders of your pop cultural roots. There's a long story you read when you were young. You almost never talk about it now. But this guy here <laughs> is here to remind you whether you like it or not. It's part of you now. <laughs> it's part of who you are. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> The calendar marks the days of your shifts as a, at a local restaurant where you work as a waitress. The page is set to February 2020, but this is wrong. The pandemic sent you into an unusually bleak depression spiral, so you haven't flipped the page in months. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. And of course, April 13th is marked with the house. <laughs> and we got 420 blows out. This is right. The date is April 20th, 2020. You guess you labeled it labeled a lot of these months in advance at the beginning of the year when you were in higher spirits. A week ago was a day relevant to a childhood interest, so you facetiously drew a little doodle to commemorate. And today, of course, is weed day. Not that you actually smoke weed. Mostly on account of being too lazy to bother acquiring any, but that doesn't mean the annual milestone shouldn't be solemnly honored with the gravity of a religious holiday. As you stare at the calendar, you mostly just can't believe it's almost May already. Has it really been that long since you went to work? You guess that must be right. Early March was the last day the restaurant was open, and you've been holed up in here ever since without pay. Man, that face on Jen's face. Sorry, I said her name wrong too. <laughs> you've gotten by you've gotten by borrowing rent money from your friend Abby, who has also been shut in since the outbreak began. Not seeing her in months, not seeing anyone really, has had a very negative effect on your mental health. Probably the biggest reason you've been waking up so late these days. Oh wow, change of like rotated the scene. There's a ton of computer equipment here, laying dormant. It hasn't been powered up in years, actually. Doing so would probably remind you of your college traumas. Sometimes you wonder if you will ever turn it on again. That's probably for the best. Your hacking days are behind you. A lot of those old projects you were working on could have gotten you into some serious trouble. 
These days, it's all about cultivating your brand, although it hasn't been going that well. More to the point, you've probably been the first to admit your online brand is fairly crappy, but one has to start somewhere. Rebuilding a social media presence after a series of psychologically devastating catastrophes doesn't happen overnight. On the floor is a printout of your manifesto. You wrote this a few years ago, before your life melted down. It began as an ironic exercise, but the more you wrote, the less ironic it became. You contemplated it just before the series of calamitous events leading to the aforementioned meltdown. You doubt this is a total you doubt this is a total coincidence, since as Abby likes to point out, only crazy people write manifestos, which is more than a little hypocritical since she's been actively writing one herself. <laughs> the Jubilite Manifesto. <laughs> Still, hers is pretty light reading, and it revolves around her secret RPF shipping theories. <laughs> Whereas the Jubilite Manifesto is an incendiary piece of left-wing literature that happens to revolve around unrepentant clownery. She's probably right to say that it's one of the best you'll ever... P She's probably right to say it's for the best that you never pick this thing up again. So if we're picking it up now? You scroll... You stroll down to... S okay. You stroll down, special interest lane has delayed the inevitable for long enough. Time to get pulled to the vortex of your traditional wake-up scrolling binge. The timeline, the threads, the feeds, the comments, they won't brainlessly ogle themselves. Supposedly it's bad for your mental health to actually like wake up and then immediately go to social media. It's really not healthy for you because it like basically puts like your entire day into the focus of what other people are thinking, and you can't have that. Anyway, Post Malone's on the lock screen. You pause to admire your lock screen. It's a more recent pic of your boy, Post, complete with all of his most recent utterly grotesque tattoos. The man is looking like fresh hell. Your heart palpitates and you feel momentarily nauseous, but you regain your composure long enough to unlock your phone. I don't even want to, I don't want to know. Your phone unlocks, there's a background. It's a gratuitously, uh, I don't know if Facebook, not Facebook, well, maybe Facebook, but I don't know if YouTube would like me saying that word. Uh, it's a gratuitously terrible piece of fan art depicting two muscular homosexual soldiers caught in the throes of passion. You keep this one as your lock screen so that prying eyes in public don't get a gander of material, which some may find inappropriate. But as your, but as your wise <laughs> a friend has pointed out, the Malone lock screen is arguably more indecent to flash in public. But enough dithering over your gallery of obscene males. Time to check your accounts. Ah. <laughs> okay, it's uh, it's like... Oh uh, gosh, Zoo Clown Boner 420. <laughs> Z, she, they, bad post maker in Nantucket, Massachusetts. And she's got 105 posts, 996 followers, and 65 following. Okay. Most of your effort in attempting to build a brand has gone into your Instagram account. As a new influencer trying to get your footing, you've been tinkering with something in the e-girl genre. So far, you aren't doing anything too crazy. Your Dadaist impulses are what your TikTok is for. <laughs> Here is mostly a bunch of tame, silly shots of you posing around on the island. The boys love it when you go to the beach for some reason. <laughs> they are very basic. Your light following mostly attracts a bunch of simps, reply guys, and rude remarks to the comment section. You ugly, we stand a queen, fire, serving, <laughs> serving looks like a goddess, total crap. Pickle Rick, sorry. <laughs> There's no sugarcoating it. Your TikTok is just plain weird, full of avant-garde crap posts of humorous of a humorous nature, usually performed in a completely deadpan manner and with oblique intent to the average user of this platform. Sometimes you'll knowingly post cringe, always ironically though, which as far as you're concerned is dynamite content. <laughs> Not many people understand it, though a handful of loyal simps in your follower list always seem to lap it up. Abby never misses an opportunity to reprimand you for your cringe posting. This has to be expected, though. She's a pro, after all. And even you know your cringe posts are indefensible. That's entirely the point. 
freaking Twitter. Twitter is bad. You hardly use this account, but you keep it on hand for the sake of contributing to receive abuse? You're not sure. The doxings and harassment have finally died down over the last year. Nothing close to what they were just after your, your meltdown. The persecution of your past crimes is barely a trickle now, which is a double-edged sword. So zero people are following. So she's not following anybody, but she has 804 followers. That's more than me. Uh, but apparently she had a meltdown. Wow. Okay. Good to know. Sure, it's nice to get fewer death threats, but it's also a sign that no one really cares enough to bother, which is bad for the brand. It's been a few days since you posted any content. The fans are getting restless. Well, not really, but they are restless in your anxious imagination. You're just shy of a thousand followers. Maybe a new post will push it over the edge. Of course, you understand the crowd isn't that eager for more content. You know it's a common affliction among aspiring influencers. The need to keep pushing content out for fear of their followers will get bored. It, as if they're a slobbering pack of wild dogs. Insatiable beasts who must have more. More. But you're not an idiot. You follow plenty of accounts too. And you know you could barely give a crap even if your favorite accounts stop posting for a while. They can chill it if they want. It simply would not affect your life. I know, I feel this- why is she so me? Ugh. <laughs> oh, the heat just kicked on. Dang, I hope that doesn't get picked up on the mic. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so people on social media are people too. Anyway. Your posting habits are more a matter of personal ethos. If you want to build a brand, the content must flow. <laughs> the spice must flow. Sorry. And so you shall make it flow. But what to post? This is always is such a burning question. You fire up TikTok because that's where the crap posts go and you you know you don't have the energy for assembling a respectable e-girl fit and fixing up your makeup. You try to think of more funny deadpan nonsense you can bullcrap your way through while lying in bed. Well, not for before fixing yourself up a little. Jeez, you look like hell. You fix your hair a bit? No, still looks bad. Well, you know what? Screw it. You're just gonna use an absurd filter and crank the irony dial all the way up, looking more and more like it's gonna be a cringe post Monday. Ew, jeez. You start babbling incoherently. E you even turned a voice filter on to maximize the cringe factor. What are you even saying? You have no idea where this is going. You play it back and yikes, it's hard to even get through the whole thing. It's dealing massive amounts of psychic damage. Perfect, actually. This is what you were going for. Let the simps grit their teeth through every second of this monstrosity. And thank you for it. Truth be told, this is the caliber of content they deserve. <laughs> you just posted cringe, she don't miss. Cringe, baby, you just dropped a whole sack of these. True angel. A <laughs> whole thing of crowns. <laughs> Yep, the reply guys are lining up to kiss your butt as always. The usual suspects every time. A little entourage of loyal and lascivious. Les oh gosh. Lascivious type men. It's sort of adorable and disgusting to you simultaneously. Psychic damage is a knife to the brain. Actually, maybe more just disgusting than usual today. You feel it creeping in. Disgust. Not with the boys, per se. It runs deeper than that. Your post sucked, and you're on the verge of regretting it. Why is this always like this? Pushing out content after getting hit- after hitting submit? Equaling- okay. After hitting submit, equal odds, that sense of loathing begins to settle in. Was the post a good idea? Could it have been better? Should you have not bothered at all? It makes you feel crazy, this media landscape. Above all, you think your disgust isn't so much about the specific post as it is with a general lack of direction and inspiration. What the heck are you even trying to do? What are you about? You're too depressed to come up with the answers today. But that, but then that seems to be true every day. You log off TikTok with dismay. You're getting a DM on Discord. It's your friend Abby. Not surprising since she almost hits you up after you post some content, usually with some friendly critique. Today is probably no different and you have a feeling you already know what she's going to say. Here we go. She's a blue text friend. Isn't it a bit early in the day to be sad posting cringe? You usually have the courtesy to wait till I'm sound asleep and you're drunk off your butt. Ugh, screw off. I know it's cringe. So this is what it's come to. Your brand as an ironic cringe poster is congealing before my eyes. 
I guess. It's hard to come up with, like, ideas for things. Ain't that the truth? All right, what are you talking about? All you do is post vids of you looking hot and saying dumb stuff. Yeah. That's a hell of a brand if you can make it work, which you obviously can. At least you know what you're about. I'm still trying to figure that out. Hasn't been going well lately. That's easy for you. No, that's easier also about looking hot and posting cringe, apparently. Well, I'm not hot enough. Not like you. Nonsense, the sizzling... <laughs> What the heck? <laughs> I don't- I'm not reading that line. And the gentleman callers you've attracted to your content, they seem none too ple displeased. Christ. Whoa, what's this? See? You crossed the thousand follower mark! See? You're being so down on yourself for nothing. You're well on your way to the big leagues. <sighs> if this is patronize- no. Is this patronizing? Besides, how do I even- Okay. Besides, how am I even on your TL? You don't even follow me. You're too embarrassed rem to remember. Because it would hurt your brand if people could check your follow list and see my butt there with all my past baggage. Aw, uh, that's not fair. You know the game, Z. How many of your fo th freaking 3 million followers would you really lose if you followed me? I do follow you with an alt. You know this. I mean, you're on your main, Abby. What would it cost you realistically if I just showed up on that list? No fanfare, no shout outs or any bull crap like that. Just one friend following another because she's got her back. You'd lose what, maybe a few grand maybe? Even then, it'd just be a handful of snarling idiots and you don't need you don't need stinking up the joint anyway. It's not even about that. It's about keeping the discourse down. Come on. I mean, not to sound like a, like a, a, yeah, but I couldn't handle the crap you just went through. You know dang well we both got the same kind of dirt on us, but like, but what? But you already screwed yourself up and I'm still keeping a lid on it all. Like, Delicately, and if you thought it was rough for you, think about what it would be like for me at my level of visibility. Oh, I see how it is. You're too famous, so you'd fall harder than I did. It's fine. I got thrown to the wolves because I'm a nobody, right? <laughs> no, I mean like... I had to go to the hospital, Abby. Okay, uh, uh, I'll follow you. Jeez. I was just messing with you. Why don't you have a turn... <laughs> Now, why did you have to turn it into such a serious thing? I don't know. It's fine, actually. Don't follow me. I know exactly why you don't. I'm just being crappy because I'm in a bad mood. You're right, of course. If it triggered discourse, I'd be the one who'd take most of the heat anyway. I just need to keep piecing my brand together the old-fashioned way. Old-fashioned? Like horse and carriage crap? Yes, Abby, that's exactly what I mean. Like how people used to cultivate their social media platforms when everybody owned horses. What? Horses? What? It was a joke. I'm... No, I was joking. I just meant figure out what I'm trying to do or say here and let people who are into what the into that come to me naturally. The type of people who couldn't give a crap about my past is like... <sighs> I know you're j you were joking. Can we please just let it go unsaid for once that we always both know when we're joking. We are always joking. We get it. We're not basic. Yeah, I know you know. My dry response to you was also a joke, idiot. And can you look and can you cool it on the key smashing? I'm still hungover and it's texting equivalent of listening to noisy traffic. Chaotic juxtaposition Dr dharma. Huh? Auto-corrected key mash exclamation to take the edge off my poor and feeble friend. Oh. I do that sometimes. It is one of my good goofs, as you know. Whatever you- no, whenever you do that, it's only funny to you and it's just confusing to everybody else. Nope, it's objectively hilarious to all involved. Has anyone ever not been confused when you do it? Lol. 
as if I'd even ever talk to anyone much about anyone much but you. At least maybe you can agree with the notion of chaotic juxtaposition dharma. Sounds pretty cool, whatever that means. Heck yeah! It's why I thought you might be bringing up a worthwhile topic rather than continuing to destroy my morning with your useless brain garbage. LMAO morning, it's almost four. Good point, I gotta get going. Okay, any sign of you going back to work yet? Nah, think of that job as toast for good. Crap, why? For a while I was hearing stuff about the owner reopening the restaurant and getting ready for the summer, but I haven't heard from her in weeks. I think she might have given up on the whole idea there will be... Okay. I think she might have given up on the whole idea there will even be a tourist season and just left the island. Or maybe she just got off the Rona and... You know, just got the Rona and died. Oh... It's fine, I don't really care. Okay, but what about rents? You need me to send you more money or... No, um, all right. I think I just won't pay rent this time. I don't even give a crap anymore. What this idiot is gonna do- No, what's this idiot gonna do? Evict me? Good luck with that, bro. Haha, <laughs> incredible attitude. F <laughs> I love you. Okay, I'm gonna go eat something and run because I feel- <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna eat something right now because I feel bad. Well, that conversation lasted a lot longer than I thought. You head to the kitchen, which isn't much better shaped than your bedroom. You pause to consider that the only reason it isn't quite as disastrous is because you spend so little time in here. You make, an you make occasional trips to peruse your scant supply of food and your copious supply of alcohol. Then, more often than not, it's right back to bed. The fridge is a total wasteland. It's hard to get out of the out for grocery shopping. Sheltering in place has warped your lifestyle bond you know, beyond recognition. Why can't I read today? Dang it. Much easier to order stuff, but money has been running low and hitting. Abby up for cash gets old. There's a pot of craft macaroni you think you made, what, five days ago? It looks like absolute crap, but it'll have to do. You heat it up on the stove for a couple minutes, then bring it to the kitchen table for consumption directly out of the pot. You make a mental note that this depression meal life hack could make for some decent ironic TikTok content. Nope, needs some work. First you would heat up the weak old macaroni. Then to save time, you transport the pot outside and put the entire thing directly in the garbage can. Then to save even more time, you'll curl up in a nearby bush and patiently wait to pass away. Yeah, that sounds better. Not today though, because you already shot your TikTok shot. Blech. On second thought, the idea barely even counts as a joke. Realistically, this meal belongs nowhere except a dumpster. The macaroni is practically inedible. You force a few more mouthfuls just for the sake of preventing some of your eternal organs from shutting down due to malnutrition and put it aside. What's next? Oh yeah, might as well get an early start. This bottle of whiskey is already open anyway. That's because it's the same bottle you opened yesterday. Now that the breakfast is over, it's time to for phase two of the day to kick into gear. Keeping yourself alive is hard work. Making such a healthy breakfast every morning is really taxing, and it takes a lot out of you. A couple spoons, as the emotionally brittle millennials like to call them. Right down to the drain, just like that. When you're low on spoons... <laughs> wow. Oh god. <laughs> okay. When you're low on spoons, the only thing for it is to recharge with another session of mindless scrolling on your phone. Do you enjoy it? Hell no. But spoons don't grow on trees, and the invisible spoonometer, which promptly floats over your head, seems to respond favorably to the practice. Scrolling, 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 some drama brewing over here, some discord ramping over there. Screw these people, absolutely screw every single one of them and all the infantile crap they argue over. Trump did what now? Who cares? Democracy is over, moving on. Wait, what's this? Another senile rapist is challenging him for presidency? Be still your beating heart, glug glug. Your attention turns to the comments of your posts have been racking up, even the old posts, which are always a few new replies to check out for a laugh. Candish Schmandish. <laughs> LMIO, do any of you sycophants even know who this is? Do you know what she did? I'm going to assume that you're willing to follow her on the account of ignorance, but if you keep following her after you see all the receipts, then I can only assume you're... Who is this cocking crap on your mentions? Oh no, a chill runs down your spine. This is one of the nightmare people who helped cancel you a few years ago. You thought you she got bored of you, but it looks like she's at it again. 
She's working hard to dredge up your problematic past to make sure everyone who didn't realize you did that stuff stays well informed. What a service she is doing for the public. You simply block the vile harpy and continue scrolling. People like her tend to hit and run trolls. Be hit and run trolls. Sure, it's still somewhat triggering to see them rear their heads now and then, but it's pretty rare these days. The followers with the real staying power, of course, are the reply guys. The merry little band of lonely boys who flutter near your flame. The modest simp farm, as you've come to regard it. God bless them. <laughs> That's the American dream, right? On a nice little farm. You heard anything on your quaint plot of land? A humble patch of dirt the Founding Fathers died to bequeath you? The, they died for your right to harvest simps. Maybe they weren't a half- Maybe they weren't half bad. Well, no, they were. You're just an enterprising woman, making all the best of a series of ill-intended imperialist blunders which took place several centuries before. So you guess that's all anyone's doing, really? These boys, though, they aren't genocidal frauds who stay in the history books of your public education. They're mostly just a bunch of harmless randy fools. You're almost fond of them against your better judgment. Ah. Hussy Gutton. Uh, sigh. You wonder how many members of this little flock happen to live here on the island? Probably nobody, since you have so few followers. You guess some of Abby's followers might live here, though? Actually, it's more than likely since Abby lives here, too. She's probably got a few simps who are thrilled to be living on the same small island with, a much, with such a sexy and popular influencer. Could some basic principle apply to you on a smaller scale? Someone following you just because he happened to notice that you're local? Not out of the question, you linger on the idea. Mm, makes sense to me. The 1,000 people who follow you, they like you, right? They will kill you if you say something wrong. But they probably like you. Ostensibly, this is why people follow each other. They hate... The hate which has chased you around has obscured this truth. But it seems likely that this is how normal people operate. That's kind of incredible for you to dwell on. That these people actually like you? Feels like a miracle that anyone would. You're certain that this list overwhelmingly consists of... Like, cis het males. You wonder how many of them are attractive. You can't possibly be more than a precious hand. Can't possibly be more than a precious handful. You try to imagine these kings, these magnificent jewels in the rough, that they would bother following you, a complete loser and craphead with a bad attitude and even worse content, while they have the audacity to be good looking and probably sensitive and misunderstood. You realize you're getting drunk enough to wonder if it's a good idea to reach out to your followers through a story post to see if anyone's nearby. Actually, that is not true. You don't wonder if it's a good idea. You are perfectly aware that it isn't. What you mean is, you're getting drunk enough to know that it's a bad idea, but do it anyway. Why why waste another second bullcrapping yourself about it? You know you're going to end up caving to yourself in the mental debate, so you just cut to the chase and do it. You prepare a cunning thirst trap and post it to your story. You check your DMs and within minutes you collect about a dozen messages all from the usual simpy suspects. Guys you were expecting to reply from <laughs> a reply from no matter where they live. Really predictable crap going on here. Something about this dude's face and demeanor. <laughs> it's probably cuz oh well. Okay angers you off for some reason you can't put your finger on so you block him. Most of these replies are completely useless. I'm in Brazil. I'm visiting as soon as I can. Winky face. Hmm, it's probably the partially dyed hair and the sonic character with headphones that don't reach the ears. We've discussed this before, people. <laughs> Percy of Hyrule. I live in Brookline, Massachusetts. Hang on, this guy says he's from Brookline, Massachusetts. That's not far off, actually. There's something to work with here. Much depends on how invested of much depends on how invested this guy is. Maybe you could rope him into coming to the island soon? Fairy schedules vary throughout the year, but there's practically always one departing from from what is that? Hyannis? Which is probably about an hour's drive from Brookline. Maybe he could even make the trip today if his desperation level is high enough. But then it all depends on whether he's worth bothering with, doesn't it? It's quite a puzzle thinking about 
the <laughs> factors in play. If he's hot enough, his desperation index could be very low. It might be like putting, pulling teeth, getting him down here, which would kill the impulsive allure of his idiotic stunt. But if he's a ghoul, you could probably get him to swim here. But then, if that's the case, why would you go to such lengths to debase yourself like this? Why indeed. It's an inter- it's an internally rhetorical question. Of course you would. Your thoughts turn against your idol, dear sweet post. A complete swamp goblin of a man, and yet if he were in your kitchen right now, you <laughs> have no doubt you'd ravage the poor fellow. He would probably be afraid of you. It would be better if he were afraid of you. <laughs> Your secret wish is that one day you hope to strike sexual intimidation into the heart of an American singer, songwriter, rapper, record produ record producer, and actor, known for his introspective songwri songwriting and laconic vocal style. Not that you would ever make such controversial remarks out loud. Not again, anyway. Not if you hope to have a brand someday. Screw it, you say. You only get to ruin your life once, or sometimes many times in rapid succession. But if that's the case, you'd like to think it all as one long, grand act of rumination. And if you're really committed to daisy-chaining a series of life-hobbling mistakes together, you might as well make it count. <laughs> Brook lines, not too far. Yeah. Just a drive and a ferry. <laughs> yeah, I've never been there. <laughs> okay, don't really care. C care. <laughs> Oop, just leaving you on the red. Leaving you on the red. Leave it. Oh. Oh gosh, stop typing, Percy. Clown. Ugh. Over there, writing a dang graduate thesis like a complex, well articulated response isn't going to mean crap to me. Okay. Insane. Who do you think you are? I don't know. Just a guy who likes your content. My content is trash and you know it. Not really. You look good, Percy. Purse. Dumb name, it sounds like a name of a c Oh, wow. I'm not really getting this. Do you really mean all these insults, or is this part of a- Is this what you're into? Jeez, Percy, shut up. I still have no idea if this is any- a good idea, or if you're a waste of my time. <laughs> all right. I'm not- I'm going to choose not to take any of this personally, since you can't possibly know enough about me to form a meaningfully negative opinion. Holy crap, we got a lady killer over here. Percy, I'm flying through the, the panty. <laughs> they just keep getting soaked due to your amorous repartee. Wow. Moron, can you just send me a pic already? Oh yeah, hang on. He's oh, sim sim sim. This selfie is corny AF. Fail. Bad. Sorry? Those ellipses you put before sorry are also corny. Don't get cute with me. Like, I can't, yeah, I'm not getting it. Do you think you're useful or whatever? Or charming? Like, you don't matter. Your little idiocons- Your idiocons- Oh, wow. Well, she's mispronounced- I can't pronounce it, and she's misspelling it. Little idiosyncrasies and quirks of personality do not matter. Maybe don't do this, because he could totally just post these later. Take off your shirt. <laughs> Squibbles. Okay. Lol. Barf. LMAO. You aren't gonna upset me. I get it now. You just like talking crap. It's your thing. That's cool. Go ahead and tell me how bad I look. I can take it. <laughs> no. I'm not... <laughs> Screwing with you. You literally just made me laugh so hard. I puked my macaroni Okay, that's not true, but good one You did that dumb face you simp <laughs> Wow Casanova face. Oh my gosh, you're so dumb. I lulled so much. I barfed also I drank too much well, you definitely do seem drunk, but I still don't believe you. I don't think you barfed. I think you're just saying that for comical effect. To own me, if you will. Don't take a picture of it. To own me, if you will? <laughs> you suck so bad, Percy. 
Percy. Little shirtless baby boy from Brookline, Percy. <laughs> Simpy Percy nip snout. Mommy would be so proud of you and your cute little nipples. Check this out, stupid. You probably just Googled that. Nope. Look. <laughs> Lol. Okay, I believe you. Good one. You puked. Uh, uh, are you alright, though? No, man, this isn't happening. What is it? We aren't bonding over my macaroni puke. It, <laughs> like, this isn't a moment we're having. We aren't becoming friends and you aren't going to screw me. Bye, purse. Yo. The shenanigan is complete, you suppose. It can be a rush to pull crap like this for reasons you couldn't really explain, but the rush is always short-lived. What soon fills the void it leaves behind is that unmistakable feeling of self-loathing and disgust. It's all a joke, isn't it? Your life, your brand, come to think of it. And you're not sure which of those two words is more deserving of derisive quotes. Maybe your quest to build a brand is childish, more vainglorious clout-seeking contributing to the loud and labored rasp of Western civilization's last disornial gas. Maybe you just delete all your accounts. It's not the first time you've had this thought, but it would be the last. The last thought you have before you pass out, that is. Bonk. Oh, she's just- Oh, wow. Okay. Don't do it. The slow fades in are killing me. It's a table. Okay then. Wait, is that actually on there? Oh wow, and there's actually words here too. Oh wow, and it's taken over like all these background items. And now the floor. Are the walls next? <gasps> what the heck is that? <laughs> like some bloody-eyed monster down the hall. Oh, I wasn't far off. What is this pixel Slender Man? Well, I mean, Slender Man doesn't have eyes, but still. Is he still there? No, he gone. Oh, but look at the, like, space outside the walls. <laughs> oh, wow, it's taking over. Oh, she's just zooming out of there. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, hi, Calamasis. <laughs> Calamasis, what? Calamasis, whatever. It looks like him, though. Okay, green guy. Your work is unfinished. vague posting <laughs> deities from beyond the stars what the hell was that was a hell of a dream you haven't had one like that in years not since that all terrible stuff okay not since all that terrible stuff was happening in, in your life not since your dad was sick and you were deliriously hammering away at your manifesto so it's not surprising the dream included both you hate dreaming about him always with the body horror stuff so that was your dad with the was he also the bloodied-eyed pixel creature? And then at the end, the strange man floating in space? Oh, so the strange man floating in space was... Okay, then. But, yeah, okay, so the pixel gray guy was her dad. Okay, then. Could he really be... Okay, the inferior... The ephemeral muse himself. Of course. Of course it's a muse. I was right on the mark with Calmasis. Okay, could he really be back? Wait, what time is it? Oh, gosh, it's dark. How long did you black out? Looks like Abby's already tried messaging you a couple times. Your head hurts and your mouth still tastes like cheese-flavored barf. <laughs> wow, you look like crap. Thanks. Is everything okay? I puked in a pot of macaroni and fell asleep for a few hours. Now it's dark. Really productive day all around. Oh, yeah, I also had a vague recollection of tormenting some semi-local simp who slid into my DMs. 
Lol, Slid. I saw your thirst trap, fool. It seemed unusually desperate, even by your standards. Made me worry. So you started pelting my unconscious body with chat invites? It's cool, you're my mom now. Well, somebody has to be. The hag who physically birthed you screwed off, right? <laughs> screwed... The screwing off was mutual. When was the last time she talked to you? Not since the incident. Works fine for me. You can be my mom. You're hotter and have more clout anyway. True, true. As if I could spare a single precious second of my day for ugliness. LMA, oh, where's... Uh, whereas ugly men are obviously a different story. Obviously. Is Post Malone still in your lock screen? Yeah. You've got all it all backwards. The nasty, not safe for work art should be your lock screen, and post should be the unlock. So much more embarrassing and obscene if anybody catches you in public with, with, with post on your phone. So you said. You're right, of course, but I don't give a crap. I love him. He's a sublime gargoyle and exquisite heap of human garbage, the perfect affront to all my senses. Ha! <laughs> your taste is so bad. You're completely unfathomable. It's like you need a zero or a ten, and that's it. Anything between, and you're like contemptuously asexual. Not accurate. What about this simp you were toying with? How do you look? Average, a little below, maybe. Real uncanny valley stuff. Totally uh, standard reply, boy fair. He might have been nice, though. I don't remember. Hello, they always are nice. Doesn't mean it crap. I know. You have said he's local. You're going anywhere with this or pulling the plug? The latter, I'm sure. Maybe you should modify your standards a bit and reel him in. Where in the effing quarantine lockdown, at We're in the effing quarantine lockdown, Abby. So, this is still kind of overblown. We aren't supposed to go to, like, concerts and stuff and get sneezed on by huge groups of people or whatever. I don't see much harm in hanging out with a few people on an individual basis from time to time. And by this, I assume you mean... What do you think? I haven't been keeping myself entertained? I still have people over all the time. Pretty dumb stuff, Abby. What? What? Are you surprised? To hear you're still an atrocious... Wow, not at all. But your parents are supposed to be the ones claimed by the boomer remover, not you. Whoa. You can't just die off before I take all their You can't just die off before you take all their money. Please don't do that to me. I'll be fine. I'll get a little cough and that's it. Big deal. Oh wait, maybe then I can infect them. Oh, actually now you're using your brain for once. Dude, not even cool on a joking level. Seriously, though, when's the last time you hooked up with anybody? I can't seem to remember where you... I seem to remember you were very busy. Okay. I seem to remember you were very busy, what, last summer? I guess that was the last time. Haven't really been in the mood since then. You kept updating me on the revolving door of weird dudes you were picking up from the restaurant. I miss that. The stories were so good. Yeah, it was a real circus here for a while, but I don't need stuff like that in my life at the moment. Did your boss even know you were picking up on... Picking up her gross male customers? As far as I know, she never found out. Doesn't matter, she's... No, doesn't matter now, she's dead anyway. What? Did you hear something or... No, it's just the reality I have chosen to believe. Pretty sure I'm quitting that job even if she reappears. I don't give a crap anymore. Good move. I highly recommend not having a job and never planning to have the have one in the future, ever. You're rich. I also highly recommend being rich. Working on it. Huh? Not hard enough, apparently. You've got a straight shot at riches being right here. Just marry into my fortune. Won't even make... <laughs> won't even make you sign a prenup. That's super generous. But no thanks, I want to make my millions the honest way, by helping you rip off your parents. Yeah, but all that does is give me their money. Where is that? Where does that leave you without the marriage cert certificate, huh? Oh, that's easy. You'll just give me it to me because you wanna? I mean, yeah, probably. See, I'll miss that restaurant if you never go wait tables there again. I won't. It's where we met, remember? Yep. Why didn't you pick me up that day, huh? Why'd you have to friendzone me so hard? Brutal. 
because you are ug a ugly wrench and you probably thought you look I probably thought you looked smelly that day. Bullcrap, you dragged me to every sewer creature you waited. Okay. Bullcrap, you dragged every sewer creature you waited on back to your place. <laughs> and you have to the audacity to call me a slut? You are. So are you. I'm not really a slut per se, so much as a person with an ex with an especially punitive set of self-harming patterns. Well, if you hate yourself so much, why not mm, self-harm a bit with me sometime? Because I'm a filthy homophobe. This is a matter of public record, remember? Lol. <laughs> you know you're not. Sure I am. I hate gays. No, you don't. Well, you're gay, and I hate you. I'm not even gay. You're gay enough. Don't erase my bisexuality. I'll erase whatever I want. Well, I like it. If we actually slept together, I'd annihilate your bisexuality. You'd become a permanent lesbian. Whoa, Z! This is getting out of hand. This will never happen, Abby. I am deeply committed to being a problematically homophobic heterosexual piece of crap who sometimes enjoys the company of ambiguously reptilian men. Besides, you're my mom, remember? <laughs> oh yeah. Can't exactly screw my mom now, can I? I am deep enough into cancellation purgatory as it is. Yeah, I would never do that to you. As my daughter, you are my responsibility. Hey, seeing as now we're clearly no longer care about quarantine, so that I can ca Okay. Hey, seeing as we now clearly no longer care about quarantine, so that I can catch up this disease ASAP and kill my parents, why don't you come over tonight? I can cook something for you, probably something better than macaroni barf. I don't know. Come on, my place is huge and expensive and extremely empty. Doesn't that sound better than wallowing in your nasty little depression cave? I guess. Maybe we could snap some content at the beach tomorrow. You know the simps always love the beach. Yeah, but I don't think I'll be putting out content like that anymore. I've been thinking about revamping the whole brand. Oh? Yeah, I just had a crazy dream? It was wild. I think my subconscious was trying to tell me something important. IDK if it's a good idea, technically, but I think I'm obliged to do it now. The crap was too powerful to just write off. Do what? Remember my manifesto? Oh gosh, that thing? Yeah, I know, it's all pretty out there, but I think there's something to work with there. Well, if it gets you to come over here and helps you to pull yourself together, then I'm all for it. I support you no matter what. What a pal. The true test of friendship is if you can humor each other's manifestos. Well, you humor mine, don't you? Oh yeah, I'm all about uh, the truth of Jim Cook's secret romance. <laughs> Lol. G Cook, actually. But yes, thank you for all your crucial support. I will say your place is the bomb. Do you think your parents will still vacation there again this summer? Or are they Rona spooked like everyone else? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they hunkered down in the family compound all summer. Good riddance if so. Still amazes me that they're okay with you just squatting in their $10 million vacation home, like, permanently. What are they even going to do about it? I have the keys and I'm a grown up woman who does as she pleases. No arguing with that. But they must feel like they're getting a great return on that Harvard biz degree they, <laughs> they bought you. Yeah, remember- th Yeah, screw that. I'm doing some numbers, mother trucker. My brand is poppin'. Something tells me they're unimpressed by your meta meteor meteor okay. Meteorically accumulated clout. Yeah, they take a huge boomer crap all over my any chance it over any chance they get. I really wonder what they like wanted, what they were picturing. I'd leave school and slide into an Amazon VP spot or something. They probably could have made something like that happen if you were inclined. I mean, maybe, but what the heck do they think business is? I'm doing business here. People like my brand. This is how you make stuff happen. Like, I can build on this to do whatever. Like, later. I didn't even need my degree. At least you finished it. Which mainly served the purpose of staving off their massive disappointment in you. Instead, they're only mildly disappointed. Yeah, sorry about all that. It's alright, I ended up saving them a lot of money by psychologically imploding halfway through MIT. MIT is actually super expensive, if you weren't aware. Oh yeah, one time my parents looked into buying it. I meant, int I meant tuition, you buffoon. 
Oh, I know, gosh, see? Remember we promised to always know when we're joking? Oh yeah. Anyway, it's not like they had the kind of money you, your parents did throw at in the expensive education. They had to work hard for that, as they reminded me often. I'll be an eternal failure to them, which means they'll be failures too. Oh crap. Well, well, half of this... Uh, the problem half solved itself, so who really gives a crap? Huh? I strongly recommend having at least one dead parent. Oh... Two is ideal, but what can you do? Aside from contemplating casual biological warfare? Yeah, my mom would never succumb to the Rona, though. Not her style. Still so funny to me that your plan to get away from all that life drama was to come here, of all places. What a- all melodramatically, like, screw this life, I'm running away to an island. Which makes you think, like, a remote island in the Pacific or something? Yeah, I mean, that was the plan. At one point, I was looking at Guam. Then I settled on Fiji as the ideal getaway place, but that didn't really pan out. Fiji sounds nice. Yeah, Fiji's the sh <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but you just hopped on a ferry to the nearest island possible? It was cheap. Poor, remember? Lol. You think she still, like, keeps up with you? Like, spies on your accounts? I'm sure Mom has no idea they even exist. It was almost a moot point, though, before my insane dream I was thinking about just deleting them all. What? I just get that way sometimes. Aside from the crazy ideas, which should probably never see the light of day, I'm actually just so boring. You're so f No, you are so funny. You are such an untapped resource. It's like a crime you've been going to waste. I know you've been going through some stuff, but there is always ways to rebound from that. Yeah, I still agonize stupidly, and I want... Okay, yeah, I still agonize stupidly, and I wonder if I should just question the source of this torment. The internet is insane. It just sits there as a bedeviling temptation. This massive, um, ominously humming well of satanic potential just beckoning you constantly. And if you aren't using it in some way to make yourself make something of yourself or elevate your identity somehow, it makes you feel like you're wasting a huge opportunity or something, or even wasting your life. It's like you're just saying, like, I'm so funny and therefore it's a waste of... It's a waste if I just log off. But a waste of what? The system makes me feel like I'm wasting a resource by withholding myself from the system, but what if the system is what's wasting me? Dang! So maybe I should listen to the sane voices in my head instead of the insane ones. Like, forget that weird dream and just delete all this crap and try to get my life together in a more normal way? That's all totally fair. I hear you. But if you want to go full normie, it's not like society is even functioning normally now anyway. Ugh, dang it, you're right. Not trying to invalidate you here, just saying like... Wait, hang on. Before you decide on anything, I want to show you something. Oh crap, you just followed me on main? Yeah. Are you sure you're ready to take this kind of heat? I did it just after we talked. I felt like a tool. But nobody's even noticed yet, lol. Maybe it'll never even come up. Yeah, maybe you're paranoid, and so am I, maybe? Probably been overthinking this. Also, I decided something else. If you really do decide to relaunch your brand, even if it is a bunch of crazy crap, I'll give you some shoutouts. Don't care if people think it's weird. That's what friends do. They support each other. Wow. Don't worry about figuring it out now, though. Just come over. I'm bored and I miss you and you need to eat something real for a change. Oh, all right, I'll head over. Yay! Oh, but don't drive drunk. Get a lift or something. Or I can just pick you up. Don't worry, Mom. I'm fine. The nap sobered me up. You promise? Yeah. Okay, heading out. You kill the video chat. It leaves a loud silence behind. Maybe it's the sound of the ominously humming well of satanic potential you just described to your friend. A sound you can hear all the time, but only now you're paying close attention to. Everything you s said to her was true, of course. You believe it with every fiber of your being. The internet is evil. You have always known this. The louder the silence gets, the more you begin to wonder if it's the only thing you've ever truly believed in with any real passion. Am I hearing stuff in the background? No, it's just quiet? Okay. Maybe I'm hearing birds outside. Birds! Outside in the real world. Oh no! Okay.
Aside from all this, of course. All right, maybe you aren't as sober as you'd like to have you to believe. Still, you should be good to drive. You grab your manifesto. You'll need to spend a few days brushing up on the material if you're serious about this, which you're still not sure if you are yet. But it won't hurt to bring it along and start reading. As you exit your apartment, you can't shake the feeling that everything is about to change. Maybe it's the fact that you haven't been out in a long time, but leaving your depression nest tonight carries the uncanny feeling of stepping into the unknown. You're glad you took your manifesto, if only because leaving empty-handed would make you feel vulnerable. As it stands, you suppose this is the closest thing to a weapon you ever had. Pause? Oh. And she goes. I'm just gonna drink some water. Oh no! Holy crud! Oh, 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 oh! It's okay. Oh wow, okay. Oh no, it's a stick policeman! You're being surrounded by Carpathians! Run for your life! Oh. It's just a manifesto! You just shot your manifesto. Oh no, it's dead. <laughs> Yo, no, you still got a gun. Calm the heck. Dude. No. Put no. No. Girl. Z. <gasps> uh Bruh. Not Cool. Great. Just freaking great. Oh gosh. And now she's taking the police car to her. What? Is she going back to her house or is she fleeing the island? I guess she's trying to flee the island. But off season in the middle of the night, there can't be anybody there. Huh. And she just freaking wow. Uh yeah, what do you think would happen, girl? Um... <laughs> what even is the heck? What? Stunned silence. Um, what now, girl? Because, uh, I mean, you left your, your car there at the scene, so why even do that? My confusion is... What the heck? Are you just going to end on that note? <laughs> Hussy? Oh, got the crown in the sky. Yeah, that's how they're gonna end that one. Okay, then. So, crown and sword are big factors in this whole situation. Well, I know that the whole, like, 
card things is the thing. Wait. Okay, so A, save. Go back. Check websites for update schedule. Thank you. At least we got a, something for me to actually figure out when chapter two is coming out. If I continue to watch this, I don't know. That kind of went crazy. Oh! I clicked on the thing and it sent me to Psychonials on, on the website. Uh, what? There we go. Yeah, it launched me to here, where it just has, like, the trailer from Hussie's, like, Hussie Tube channel. And it's a release schedule. Third, so I guess next week. Week two. What is all this? So it's like a 12-week cycle, so I guess it'll be, like, from between here and 420. Clark Powell? Thought so. I'm gonna take a look at it. <laughs> uh, Summer That Never Was. Was Clark Powell the one that did the Homestuck album? Like the, did, you know what I'm talking about. The one I'm, the, the Lancer one. But wow, that, that was actually kind of depressing and kind of, it went from zero to a hundred, like really, really fast. I'm not entirely sure I enjoyed the first chapter, to be honest. I'm sorry if I'm not making too much sense. I'm kind of like an internal being that kind of like figures stuff out like m like internally and doesn't really do well like explaining things out in the open, at least not without writing it down first. Um... But yeah, that that's a thing that happened, all right. That that was a thing that that happened. Um anyway, while I po contemplate this whole entire thing, I don't think this is going to get much editing done to it. Um I'm just letting you know in advance before you guys log off uh, there will be like a video coming out next weekend like next Saturday uh, on the 12th on the 13th I th yeah the 13th naturally always the 13th uh, yeah not a not a big video but I'd still appreciate if you guys watched it anyway anyway I'm gonna go now and go uh, kind of disassociate in the corner. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you all next time. Bye. Hey there. Consider becoming a patron, just like the phenomenal Bleed Red, Alexander Madeline, Uranium Coffee, Ryan Nelson, and our newest supporter, Rune Dar. This level of support? In this economy? My figurative hats off to you, Rune Dar.